Today's a Sala Puja. It's the day of our refuges, all three of them. Visakha is the day for the Buddha. Makha is the day for the Sangha. But a Salahat is for all three, because all three are very intimately connected. This is the day on which the Buddha gave his first sermon. And so in that sense, it's the beginning of the Dharma. As John Swat pointed out, there's Sapawa Dhamma, which is just the Dharma of the truth, the way things are. That's always been there, always will be. But then there's Sasana Dhamma, the Dhamma of the teachings. And that's available only from time to time. And when the Buddha taught the Dhamma Chaka, that was the beginning of the Sasana Dhamma. And it's because of the Sasana Dhamma that we know about the Dhamma of truth. So that's an important refuge. And in teaching that, the Buddha was able to get his first disciple. The head of the five brethren got the Dharma eye, where he was able to see the deathless and see what was subject to arising origination and passing away, and what was not subject to origination and passing away. So that was the beginning of the Noble Sangha. And the Buddha immediately made him a bhikkhu, which is the beginning of the conventional sangha. And we depend on both. The conventional sangha is the vehicle for, that makes it a lot easier for all of us to keep the teachings alive and enables us to become members of the noble sangha. And of course the fact that the Buddha was able to teach the Dharma and gain his first disciple, that was proof that he wasn't just a private Buddha, he was a complete Buddha. So in that event, that was the beginning of all three refuges, and you have to remember they're all connected. It's because of the Buddha that we have the Dhamma, and of course it's because of the Dhamma that the Buddha was able to find true happiness. And the Sangha is what keeps these teachings alive. Now that distinction between the Dhamma as a truth and the Dhamma as the teachings reminds us that Dhamma as a teaching is not always going to be around. All kinds of things can come to make it go away. However, we've got the opportunity right now to practice it. That's how you keep it alive. So remember that the Dhamma as a teaching is not always going to be here, so take advantage of it while you've got it. Don't let your petty concerns get in the way. Because we keep on finding reasons to get upset about this, worked up about that. And it deflects our attention from what's really important, which is the Buddha pointed out in his first sermon. It's the problem of suffering. It's something that we create ourselves even though we don't want it. But because the causes lie within and we've got the potentials to create a path within that can un undercut those causes. We have to keep our focus inside. That's where the real problem is. So don't let yourself get deflected from the real problem, off into subsidiary problems. Because solving the little problems is not going to solve the big one. You can't say, well, I'll wait until this gets straightened out and that gets straightened out, and then I'll be happy to practice. We have to practice in an imperfect world. The world was imperfect at the time of the Buddha, it's imperfect now. But we can build the perfections within us. The traditional image is of a lotus that grows in the mud, comes up out of muddy water. But when the lotus blooms, the inside of the flower is pure. So try to find that purity within your heart. Purify the heart, because that's what all these teachings are about. That's the refuge that they provide. <laughs>